Gentlemen, I believe I may have an issue. The Claymore is the most the fun I've had with a sword big sword since right right the sword of wearing a sword. Of the weapon of the sword is early on. So on so so I think I may have an obsession with great swords. The Flamberge is the fifth and final, for now, great sword I'll be doing one of my cute little weapon showcases on. The weapon has a couple properties that differentiate it from the last four great swords we have discussed previously. Firstly, we have a weapon that scales mainly with dex and not strength. Having high dex offers the advantage of faster spell casting, if you so choose to integrate that into your build. Unfortunately, two-handing your weapon does not boost your effective dexterity like it does with strength so we'll have a little less room in the stat allocation this time around. The other more unique feature of the Flamberge is that it has innate bleed buildup, being one of two great swords with this attribute, and anyone who has played the game for more than 47 seconds can tell you how crazy bleed buildup can be. The Flamberge is a great sword with a slower moveset than other blood loss inducing weapons, so you won't see the status effect as often as a Rivers of Blood user. But you will certainly make up for less bleed damage with more poise damage. For Ashes of War, I highly recommend a good poise damaging move with a keen infusion. Among the best choices would be Lion's Claw, Piercing Fang, and my favorite, Impaling Thrust. The way this build plays is simple but satisfying. Charged R2s quickly drain poise, critical attacks hit for huge damage, and all that time the blood loss meter is building up. For our stats we want to have the good old 60 vigor, 15 mind to use our ash of war a few times, 34 endurance to carry our greatsword, the scaled armor minus the helmet, and a couple of other tools which we will get into momentarily. 15 strength, just enough to hold the Flamberge in one hand, 80 dex to hit that final soft cap. Intelligence, faith, and arcane are not used in this build at all, so we'll leave them at 9, 9, and 7 respectively. Since we have the strength to wield our greatsword with one hand, we can put something useful in the left hand. And by something useful, I mean the buckler. After doing my parry playthrough, which you can check out on my channel, I have been obsessed with the mechanics of parrying. And if you've yet to try a parry, having a blood loss inflicting greatsword by your side is not a bad place to start. There is one more piece to the puzzle of this build we need to put in place. In Elden Ring, much like freshman year, many things will inexplicably run away from you, putting them far out of greatsword range. This is why our final part of the build is a great bow. Now, I used the great bow during my run, but after refining my build a bit in post-game co-op sessions, I realized Radon's great bow is so much better for this build. The bonuses Radon's arrows get in this bow are sweet, even though the damage isn't what we're after. We want to make sure enemy poise does not reset after smacking them around with our Flamberge repeatedly. Radon's great bow is also thematically more fitting to the build, as in the Flamberge's item description, it calls itself the symbol of Castle Redmain, the home to the beautiful Radon Festival. 